Hi, I'm Randy Robinson. This is Life Today TV. I have Bobby Meacham with me. If any of you baseball aficionados know that name, uh, he has coached in the majors and the minors. And uh, a few years ago, he was a shortstop for the New York Yankees. Bobby, thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks for having me. You uh, are uh, obviously a baseball guy. Your life has been spent in, in some capacity or another playing, but you're also uh, an outspoken believer. You're a Christian. Absolutely. And I, I felt like uh, ever since I became a, a player, almost right after that moment I signed to play professional baseball, God uh, led me to Bible study and led me to, to Jesus Christ. I knew about him you know, growing up as a kid, a little, a little religious background in my family, but I didn't know him real well. But now uh, as I started to play professional baseball, I started to see some real... Uh, telling things in the Word, started to go to Bible study and, and really find out how to know, know Jesus, not just know about Him, and I accepted Him in my life. How did that work out? Because sports is, you know, kind of a man's right. world, and it can be a little rough at times. Yeah. Well, did the beginning of it was when I was in college. I was in college uh, at San Diego State University, and I remember uh, there was a couple of real tough guys on our team, and I remember these guys, were, you know, they chewed tobacco and they spit, you know, a couple of catchers, you know, I mean, Roger Blair and Steve Esau, I remember their names even, and I remember them walking up to me one day and saying, hey, uh, you want to come, come, come over to our house tonight? We're having Bible study. I was <laughs> like, Bible study? You know, wow, yeah. I mean, these guys are tough guys. These guys are, you know, these guys are out there, you know, breaking up double plays and running over catchers on the other team. Yeah. I'm like, this is kind of cool. Yeah, I'm kind of interested. And I started going to Bible study in college, started to get to, to hear a little bit more and more about Jesus. And then uh, at the end of my college career, I accepted Christ in my life. Very cool. Uh, in the majors, was, was that a good thing, a bad thing, or just it was different. You know, I was kind of the Lone Ranger. And you know, by the time I got up to the major leagues with the Yankees, um, I was one of uh, maybe two or three guys on the team that were Christians. And, and I was kind of looked, looked at upon as, oh, here's one of these soft Christians who, you know, he's just kind of one of these guys that's, you know, I went 0 for 4. Uh, you know, God must have wanted me to do that. And, and my, my job was to basically uh, to just uh, live, live my life like God wanted me to and let them see Jesus through me and uh, let them see that, that that's not what God thinks of his, his, uh, his, his kids down here on earth. What God wants us to do is, is he's called us to be our best, and that's in baseball too. He calls us to, to, to break up double plays. He calls us to work harder than anybody else and run hard and, and, and make plays and, and do the best we can and never expects us to fail, wants us to fail. Mm -hmm. he's, he's cheering us on to, to be successful and uh, wants us to work as hard as we can to be that way. And So my, my, my job was to basically uh, play for the audience of one, play for Jesus and, and let his light shine and let them see that there's no uh, meekness or weakness in Jesus at all. Did you change anyone's opinion about Christians or Christianity? Yeah, I think I did a, a few guys, that, yeah. a few guys, uh, but mainly it was, it was because they saw me just be real. They saw me, um, you know, like, like I said before, they saw me working hard. They saw me uh, dealing with failure just like they had to. They, uh, but they're, mainly there's still a lot of skeptics that, that kind of look at you and go, yeah, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, he's not perfect, so it can't be that great. You know, so okay. a lot of excuses in there. But as I got older and played a few more years with the Yankees and guys that got to know me, I think they did have a, uh, a glimpse of, of Christ um, and what he could do in their lives. And I know a, a couple of them that actually came to know Christ later. Um, one of my favorites is Don Mattingly. And uh, it was great mm -hmm. when he was an all-star when I was playing with him. We came up together. He was an all-star in the big leagues and, and just kind of would always – we hung out, but not really. And he kind of knew something was there that he liked about me. But um, but then later on, when I started coaching, maybe five six years after I would, after I was done playing, uh, he came up to me and said, "Hey, I just want to let you know I'm I'm in the Word heavily, uh, and and I know Christ now." And, and that's uh, great. Just wanted you to know that. So that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's that's got to be a little bit of uh, you know just a bump up to you to say you know, hey, God, kind of saying you lived your life right, and here's a little payoff. Yeah, well, you know, and like I said, there's there's so many bumps along the road. I mean, like my life, I took a few detours along the way that I'm not proud of. But uh, just to know that Christ is working, I mean, God's digging in and, and uh, making making a difference in people's lives, whether you're perfect or not, um, it's, it's good to know. And he know, I know for sure that once you fall down, I, I just uh, ask him to help you back up and, and you can walk with him again. Cool. You've been coaching since when? 19? Boy, my first year coaching was 19... Uh, 1991. 91. Yes. Okay, so a long time, <laughs> a long time yeah. in professional coaching. Uh, there seems to be a few more Christians in the sport now. Is is that your perception? I think so. Yeah. I think there are. I think there are a few more. And I think what it, what's happening is you're seeing a lot of help given to the players now by 
by volunteers. Uh, baseball, for instance, there's Baseball Chapel, which is basically what it is, a group of, of men who started this organization long when I, when I first started playing in 1981, and it's grown to the point where every major league team has a chaplain for that team, specifically assigned mm -hmm. to that team. And every minor league team has a chaplain assigned to that team. These are volunteers who come in and give us, uh, do services for us on Sundays, and they also uh, do Bible studies for us, uh, usually once every homestand. So these guys are able to pour their lives into these professional ball players, and in turn, I think what you're seeing is um, guys come alive and, and lead and lead others down that same road. Mm. What would you say to the athlete who is, uh, you know, maybe maybe playing minor, major league, something right now? Uh, maybe a high school kid who's kind of headed that direction, who has some some level of faith that, that is going to come into play, you know, at some point. What would you what would you say to that that young man, that young woman? Well, my you know my address to is, to, is like to my kids. I, I have kids 22, 26, and 27, mm -hmm. and we've taught them all along since they were kids to to be the best they can be. Um, that's what God's called them to do. We can uh, put pressure on ourselves to to try to be great and make a lot of money and be famous, but that's not what we're called to do. That's not what we we put too much pressure on that or too many goals into that basket. It's just all going to fall apart. Mm -hmm. God's made us a specific way. Um, if we become the best we can at what he's made us to become, that's all he asked for. We talk about uh, with our kids to, to focus on playing or working or doing whatever you do for Jesus. So he's that one, the audience of one up there that's watching. And so we want to do the best we can to, for him, to honor him and to bring him glory to the, you know, the person he's made us to be, fulfill that as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And whether that leads us to the big leagues or or not playing at all, um, he's happy with that. And once we please God, our God is an amazing God. And once we are able to please him with, with what he's blessed us with, that's all we can ask for and that's all we should really want to do. Mm, good advice, good advice. Are you open to speaking to uh, FCA groups or churches or, or other, other groups, athlete, athletes in action, anything like that? Absolutely, I've spoken to, to all those groups. Okay. Uh, FCA, uh, churches, uh, sometimes, and when you're visible a little bit as an athlete, a big league player, or sure. an ex big league player, an old yeah. coach, one yeah. of those, uh, somebody's going to ask you to come in and try to um, offer some advice for those for those kids. What is the best way for someone to contact you if they'd like you to come speak to their group? Well, if they'd like to get in, in touch with me, the best way is to go to the meachbreeze at gmail uh, dot com. Okay, great, great. Check it out. Uh, have them come speak to your athletes or just your church, whatever. It'll be good. Uh, and do check them out uh, when he's on Life Today with his wife, Gary. That's at lifetoday.org. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.